Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, we'll take another look at the Power Query M function for the extended date table. Since initially posting the code, there have been a number of updates. With the help of our enterprise DNA community, it has grown into quite an extensive date table that pretty much covers everything you're likely to require. The most recent update also includes documentation on parameters and some clarification notes on attributes found in the date table. I recommend getting the most recent version directly from the Enterprise DNA forum. You'll find a link to that below in the description. Other links I'll add refer to topics on creating dynamic start and end date for date table queries, and the cheat sheet that Brian Julius developed, which includes an example value, list the value types, but also appropriate sort by columns for this date table. Let's get started. We'll create a new blank query by right clicking in the query pane, select a new blank query. Open the advanced editor window, select everything we see and paste in the code. Press done. Let's rename this query. Perfect. Now all we need to do to create an actual date table is to invoke this function query. Let's enter a start date and an end date. I won't pass a fiscal year start month or a weekday start number. I'll just press invoke. Let's rename this query as well. So this is our dates table. As you can see, this is a very extensive date table and it will most likely contain fields that you'll never require. Now, if that is the case, you can add a single line of M code to the date table M function. So to only generate the columns that you do require for your business needs. And I'll walk you through how to make that modification to the code. Now we can use the user interface to write most of the M code for us, right? If we generate that bit of code that we require right here in this invoked function query. So let's select the columns that we want to keep in this query. Perfect. Now I've got all columns selected that I want to keep. I can right click one of my columns and select remove other columns. As you can see in the formula bar, this now lists all the column names for the columns that I want to keep from this query. And all we need to do is copy that bit of M code directly from our formula bar. So I'll extend the formula bar and copy the entire code that we see here. Control C. Now at this point, I can step back to my function query. Open the advanced editor again, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And at the end of the last line, that reorder column step, skip to the end, add a comma, enter to get a new line. Let's create a variable name. Let's call it select columns. Paste in the code that we've copied. Let's move to the front of the line again. And all we need to do is that this points to the source step, right? Now we don't want that. We want the last step here. So copy this variable name and paste it in here and copy this variable name and paste it after the in clause right there. Excellent. Press done. So this updated our query. Let's move to our day table query and delete that last step. And as you can see, this is now 27 columns wide. 
So with this slight adjustment in the code, I can get a subset of all the columns from that very extended date table that I can use in my business and is always in that exact same shape. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.